Looks like today is tailor-made for editing videos instead of being in the garage freezing my butt off. All right. Well, guys, I'm back in the garage. Um, I do have to say I apologize for not posting anything for the last few weeks. But as a UPS employee during the Christmas season, I disappear for the most. I will say, though, today is kind of a special video. This is something I've been waiting to do, well, pretty much since I bought my bug. Now, back in my intro video, I mentioned two bugs that really inspired me to build a bug. And they were both uh, had one particular thing in common. Both of them had an A-arm suspension. And to be honest, the last couple months, even while I was building the uh, light bar and its mounting system, I've been secretly obsessing and scouring forms for ideas and designs and kind of trying to figure out what exactly I was going to do. So today, we're going to cover that. Now, while there is a couple of good, really good uh, A-arm kits available online. Uh, with some prodding from my wife, I am looking forward to actually building my own A-arm suspension, but today's the day where I start that process. While I've built many suspensions from off-the-shelf car things all the way to custom designing and fabbing uh, four-wheel drive suspensions, this is going to be my very first two-wheel drive, high-speed, A-arm, center mount A-arm system. Uh, I don't know how it's going to turn out. So but the trigger warning is watch at your own peril. Um, some of the ideas are probably going to be good. Some of them are going to be bad. I don't know. We're going to find out together. But whether you love or hate what I'm about to do, I'm actually looking forward to some of your comments in the comment section. So please go ahead and do that. That said, I'm super excited for this phase of the build. Let's get started. I'm going to share with you a couple of the images that I took. Um, as I've been working up to this, I've spent hours and hours just doodling ideas and thoughts and things uh, on in paper, notebooks, uh, the my art book and things of that nature. I've also kept an eye out on Pinterest and Instagram and stuff like that, other YouTube channels. Whenever I see someone doing a nice A-arm suspension or have a design that I really like, I've really kind of screenshotted those. I'm putting those, some of those up right now. As you can see, there's some really cool ideas, really awesome fabricators out there. I appreciate you guys putting out what you're doing, but man, I really appreciate your guys' fab work. I really appreciate your creativity, and I really appreciate how it's inspired me to do the same. So I hope uh, some of these pictures I'm putting up are giving you guys ideas as well if you decide to build your own A-arm suspension. After hours of sitting, sketching, and doodling around, watching TV while I'm talking to friends on over the internet, uh, things of that nature. I actually came up with the final idea that I came as I was taking, had some down, pulled out a, a post-it note of all things. Not, it wasn't the drawings in my art book. It wasn't the drawings in my notebook, any of those things. It was basically this doodling on one of the big post-it note like kind of pads. So this is my overall idea for the front and or the top and bottom A-arm system. The lower arm, forgive all the mess. Uh, the lower arm, I'm gonna be using an inch and a half by three inch box tube. I tried an inch by three inch, but it looked too, I don't know, took too small to me. So I went with an inch and a half by three. I'm gonna just cut the box tube. A lot of guys will actually just build all of this out of plate and then do some internal structure. I, I just don't have that kind of cutting time and cutting equipment to make decent, good, repeatable cuts. And so my thought is I'm gonna cut out the box to the shape I want, and then I'm gonna plate it. This dotted line up here is all gonna be plate. Uh, so, and then on the front end to tie it in, I'm gonna take some inch and three quarter, uh, cut it in half, and then plate the front edge and maybe the, the back edge, the trailing edge, of the structure. The reason I'm going to do that is as to make to provide like a like a bumper of sorts. Um, like I said, I'm new to desert driving. I know I'm going to drive into a tree or a boulder or a rock or a wash or a bush, and I just want something that will protect the structure of the A arm before it actually gets to the A arm. So that's that's the hope, and that's what this little 
thing is there. Now, as far as the weld in bung, typically you use a round weld in bung for round two. But since I'm using box tube, I ordered a, a square one that fits in the square tube. I use this to spread the load across the whole A arm. The upper arm, same exact system. I will use three quarter inch shackles at the frame end, bushings uh, that are three inches wide, uh, two bushings. I wrote down inch and a half by three box tube for the actual uh, substructure. And of course, a little go across. And again, the, uh, the round tube will cover the forward edge of that. While it's gonna be box tube, I am gonna use, cause I got these with the Himes, I am gonna use a round uh, tube, welded in right here, uh, welded in there to, uh, to mount the Himes. While the construction of the arms with the box tube uh, substructure with a plate on top and on the bottom, is going to be similar on the two arms. You will notice that the, the big aesthetic change from the uh, top and bottom arm is the top arm is going to be sweeping back as to clear the coilover shock that's going to land on the forward edge of the bottom arm. Other than that, they're, all going to, they're both going to be about the same. One's going to be sweeping back to the pivot point or to the knuckle, and the bottom one is going to be sweeping forward. I apologize, but Again, a trigger warning for the internet trolls who are going to jump all over this. I know most people will build like some sort of model and things of that nature to test their idea and thought. I'm, I've been itching to do this for so long. I really don't want to, I don't want to put it off any further. So let's, let's just jump right in. Okay. Okay. First thing I needed to do was to clean up my bench. Since I've been welding on it, there has been quite a few spatter marks that stuck to the top. Then I got out some two by four by three sixteenths box tube. This will be the foundation of my center mount frame slash bulkhead. There was some oxidation on the tube, but after wire wheeling it and then going back over it with some 50 grit sandpaper, the oxidation was gone. After that, I pulled out my art paper and drew everything out once again. This time, double checking my plans with the actual measurements with the, from the parts that I'm using. As noted in a previous video, I'm using 3 8 inch thick leaf spring shackles for my mounting tabs. I need to cut out the center of the shackles so they'll go around the box tube. I'm also upgrading the bolts to the shackles. Typically, people use half inch bolts for leaf springs, but I'm gonna use 9 16 So I took the shackles to the drill press and punched them out. Next, I cut out the other two shackles. I've been using the porta band quite a bit. And considering the fine cuts drop slivers of metal into the blade guides, I figured I'd use a cutoff wheel and a grinder for these. This may be faster, but I had way more control with the porta band. Sure enough, I wasn't quite happy with the cutoff wheel and moved back to the bandsaw. Which, by the way, almost immediately dropped a decent sliver from the fine cut and jammed up the blade. So here I am, clearing the blade guides and trying to be more careful with the drops. Next, I figured I'd assemble the shackles and weld them on, but quickly remembered it would be easier to cut the caster into the bulkhead prior to welding tabs on. So I got out my angle finder and found six degrees of upward tilt to cut into the two x four. Different people will tell you the different amounts of caster. Anywhere from five to seven is common. So I set my cut for six degrees and made a line with the square. Then I broke out the chop saw and cut the angle into the box tube. Satisfied with that, I started measuring out where I wanted the A-arm tabs to be. I'm doing my best to ensure that they are level and square to the box tube before welding them on. Even the smallest degree off can hamper the drivability, so I measured quite a few times. Once I was reasonably sure that it was square and level, I tack welded the tabs into place. Then after double checking yet again, I root past the tabs on the box tube. I even checked again to make sure nothing shifted while welding. But with that, I double passed the tabs onto the would-be bulkhead. Then after wire brushing the welds, I started setting up the second set of tabs. After carefully measuring them out and ensuring that they were square and level, The 
four tabs got welded on. Once the outside of the tabs were double passed, I removed the spacers for the bushings and wire wheeled the welds like before. Now I would like to say that on the first set of tabs, I welded the outside and then the inside before I took the spacers out. And that slight bit of heat distortion by welding the insides up made it difficult to remove the spacers because it was so tight. For that reason, I go in ahead and I use my sanding pad to open up the clearance on the inside of the tabs. I'm not too worried about the strength of the tabs because they're 3 8 inch thick and there is plenty of material there. I'm only taking out a few thousands just to make it slip in and out nice and easy. This way I could cycle the suspension completely and get my shock placement as well as set up my steering and while look out for bump steer. Well guys that's it for this video. I just wanted to kind of go over the philosophy that I'm using as well as the design ideas that I came up with for my first center mount A-arm suspension. The next few videos is actually going to cover the actual fabrication of the upper and lower arms as well as how to make them identical which is kind of important. And then we'll put the whole system together. If you have any questions or comments go ahead and drop them in the comment section. But anyway, please take a moment and smash that like button and consider subscribing as there's still a lot to do to the Baja before I'm done. But with that, thanks for watching. I'm Damien and this is The Binder Builder.